Hi, welcome back to my channel, or nice to meet you if you're new. I'm Tyra Biro, and today we're going to be talking all about graphic liners, and I'm going to do six different graphic eyeliner looks. What I really enjoy about graphic eyeliner looks is the way that it can add a little bit of je ne sais quoi, pop of colour, a little bit of fun to an outfit that otherwise you wouldn't have had. Today I thought I'd challenge myself by doing six different graphic eyeliner looks. I haven't actually touched my graphic liner sets in a few weeks or months because I was finishing up with my dissertation. So I think now it's really fun to kind of get into it and start again. This is some of the experience that I've had in the past. This is some of the things that I have created. So I've got my iPad here with the looks that we're going to be doing. I've got them going from least difficult to most difficult so I can give myself a chance to warm up. In terms of the tools and items that I have with me today, I have two graphic liner sets from Glisten Cosmetics. I really do love these. This one was a palette that was already built on the website, so it's got a whole bunch of different colors. It's all completely rainbow. And then I got myself a mini palette with colors that weren't available on this palette, but that I really wanted. This is a little palette that I've customized, which is available to do on their website as well. There wasn't a black available in the main set, and they had one white color, but I didn't think that one white would be enough. And so I got a black and white. As you probably saw as well, this palette did come with a brush. But just to make my own life easier, when I was getting into all of this, I did go ahead and I bought a brush set that they had available on the website as well. It has them all available in different thicknesses. I also do have a little dotting tool as well. So I got this available on Amazon, I think for like 15 pounds or something. And all the little bottoms have different thicknesses of the balls so that you can have different sized dots on your face. I also do have a bunch of Q-tips and I really like these because they're pointed on one side, which helps with the precision when cleaning up any of the errors. I also just have a repurposed jar that I filled with water because these are all water activated liners and some tissues just for like any cleanup or any spots as well. I think this is just gonna give me a really good chance to use some of the colors that I've never really experimented with before. So this is the first one that we're gonna be doing. It's pretty simple. I think the only difficulty in there that I can see is potentially the, the ombre of the color, but I really think that it's quite cute. For this look, I think I'm gonna go into the lavender to start off with, and then I'm gonna go into slightly more deeper purple towards the end and then for the orange color I'm just gonna go in with this one so I think that is the best orange I'm gonna get that's gonna match that color I think I'm gonna start with the orange as well the one difficult thing with me doing graphic liners that I notice is that I think with all the photos that I'm gonna show you people tend to have a lot more like eyelid space than I do I didn't realize how tiny my eyelids were also how close together apparently my eyes are as well because for example she has a nice little wing coming in and then she's got a nice thick eyeliner and then she's got space for a, a pretty decent streak above her eye as well and i mean i think just the eyeliner would pretty much take up like half my eye but anyway i am i think i'd like to preface this by saying i'm absolutely by no means an expert on what i'm doing i just have fun I've never been really good at the inner eye wing just because I think, like I said, because my eyes are so close together, it ends up just going onto my nose, which might look a little bit odd if it was just a flat surface. So I normally do just leave that, but it's in the video, let's put it in. <laughs> it's a weird that I'm kind of vibing with the orange lower lashes. Okay, well that is why we have the Q-tips. So one of the easiest things for me when I'm doing something like this, right, is especially with an ombre, is that I like to go over, kind of sketch out the entire look with the lighter color first, and then I can just go over and blend it in with the darker color. <coughs> no, no. Okay, so right now I have finished the base of the look, as you can see. Right now I finished the base. So what I'm gonna do now to get the ombre is I'm gonna start at the edges with a darker color and then work my way in. And sometimes when I'm doing an ombre, I don't actually clean the brush in between because I'm gonna be using that mixed color anyway. This might have been the wrong color. And then just blend it out from here. So I'm gonna leave that section. Since my brush is still quite pigmented, I'm gonna go in on the other side and then I'm gonna work it back. 
I have my camera set up right on the window so I keep having to take a break to let it cool down because it keeps overheating in the Singapore sun. So I apologize if the lighting has changed for me waiting too long. And I'm just gonna clean up the eyelashes with a little Q-tip. And then I just have to lightly brushing it on my lashes. Okay, so I've put on some mascara just so that you can see what it would look like with the dark lashes, like how she has it. Okay, so that is the first look that we have done. So time to take this off and start again. The good thing about the graphic liners as well is that because they're water-based, they're a lot easier to take off than any oil-based products. So I'm just gonna go wipe my eyes off and I'll be right back. All nice and clean. We're moving on to the next look. I would say this is more or less very similar level of difficulty actually to the first one. But I think the technicality comes a little bit in maybe the placing of the dots and making it a little bit more symmetrical. So you're gonna be doing that. It is a very simple color as well. I think I wanna try a different color. I just went in for like a little bit of a purpley and that's really purpley. So maybe I'll go in for a green. I don't really tend to do greens. It's a very light color. So I think I'm gonna go into this very light green over here. One of the nice things as well that I love about this palette that I didn't actually mention before is that all of the little bits and pieces are depotable so I can swap these around if I want to take, for example, my 910 palette instead of my bigger palette. I'm gonna restart this one. <laughs> Okay, so I've just finished up with the basic look and what we're gonna do to finish it off is that we're gonna go with the dots now. So if you look at the dots, they kind of have a bit of a graduation, especially like on the inner eye. The outer eye, it's not really that noticeable. So what I'm gonna do is that... Okay, so that's all the bigger dotting tools done. So now I'm gonna go into the smaller dotting tool and then I'm gonna make the medium size dot and the tiny dots as well. So that is the look all finished up. But I think you kind of have to adapt the looks a little bit to your anatomy sometimes. So for example, for me, I would have brought it up a little bit higher here, maybe kind of up there, but I do like the way that it turned out. I think it still has that little bit of a funky look. But otherwise, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So there we go, that was the second look. I think I'll give it four out of five stars. And then I'm gonna clean my face. We're gonna move on to number three. Okay, so I am back and I'm going to do um, number three. So I think this is kind of a combination of the first two that we've done. So it's got a nice little swoosh and it's got a little bit of a dotting tool as well. I'm gonna come back to this palette. I think I'm gonna go for maybe like the burgundy as like the main color. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the burgundy as a main color, and then I'm still gonna keep the white flash, but I think I'm, instead I'm gonna do pink instead of yellow. Okay, so two big swooshes, let's do this. So that was one take, I really do like that. I think once it dries a little bit, I'm just gonna go over it a little bit more just to fill in the opacity over here. But that was a really good flick. I'm quite happy with that. So what I found was easiest is to actually do the petals first and then go in and do the central dot. Because if you do the dot first and worry about the petals on the outside, you're more likely to smudge the dot in the center. But you just do that. Just kind of fix whatever mess you've made. Okay, so on my camera charges, I'm just gonna finish up doing the white section and then I'll be back to do the dots. Okay, so I've just finished up all the tiny little white bits and I'm just gonna go over with the pink to fill in the center bits. I'm gonna go in with, I think, the sparkling pink. From here, that's gonna be a bit of a contrast. It's still gonna be light, but add a little bit of something to it, I think. Okay, and done. So I've just finished up the final look. I think maybe I should not have gone for such a light pink on the inside of the white flowers. So I think you can barely tell that they're there, but I really do like it. It makes me feel really cute. Kind of like a little woodland fairy almost. So I'm really happy with the way that it looks. But yeah, I think with this one at least, I think I'm gonna give it like a 4.5 out of 5 because I think I recreated it pretty well. Maybe the white flowers could have been a little bit smaller, the small ones. Maybe the bigger flowers should have been maybe a slightly bit bigger because I feel like they all kind of almost look the same. Hello again, so we are back now on the next day and I'm gonna be finishing up the next couple looks. So the next one that I wanted to go for, 
think we really just have to like step it up to the next level. But yeah, so we're going in for this butterfly look. What I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna go in with the colors that I have. The only colorful palette that I do have is this one from MAC that I've borrowed from my sisters and it doesn't really have a giant range of colors in it. So I'm just gonna go in with the gold and the red and try and get that kind of look, see how that goes. And then I'm gonna paint over it. I don't have any gemstones, but if we get the little white dots, I think it will look okay. So I'm gonna get started with that. I don't think it's too much of an issue if it doesn't look perfect because I'm gonna cover it up with the butterfly anyway. I'd like to make it clear here that I am actually trying. Like I might be making jokes here, but I am actually wanting these to look good. So I'm not sitting here just being like, meh. Okay, so thankfully this is not actually the hardest butterfly I've seen. And I think I can generally tell how it's gonna start. You start doing a bit of a high wing, connect it. Yeah. I think you can do that. This is actually the first time I'm going over eyeshadow with a graphic liner, which just immediately feels so much more daunting. It's a lot better, the ones at the bottom, than the ones that she did. And then I'm gonna try and sketch her on the other side, see how I like, and then I can come back and adjust this one if needed. I like the bottom of the wings on this side a lot better than on this side, but I prefer this top wing to this. So I think I did a bit more of a swooping motion when it should have been a bit more flat. I think I can get away with this though, at least on this side, because I'm just gonna thicken up the top because of like little veins between the membranes. So I'm just gonna thicken it up to make it seem like it's that section of it. This side of the bottom, I think I'm gonna redo though. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've had a spiral trying to redo the bottom bits and I think I'm just gonna restart the wings completely just because I'm like, oh my god, what is happening? Okay. I think I've kind of adapted a little bit so I'd be a bit happy with it. I've kind of overlapped the two of them slightly so it looks like maybe like a thicker double one but I like that something about doing the little inner corner part of the eyeliner always makes me think of hulks from my hair academia Okay, so this is now the finished look. I am actually really, really happy with it. If I was gonna rank it, I think I'd put it at that. Five out of five stars. Just because I've never done graphic eyeliner on top of eyeshadow before and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I mean, there are obviously differences between the way that the two butterfly wings look, but being my first time doing this kind of style, I'm actually really happy with it. And I think this is something that has almost inspired me to do 2016 makeup like jumping away from the graphic liners because i kind of like the vividness of it and like the amount of like shine and color on it i think it looks really good but besides that the little butterfly wings themselves i just find them to be so cute and i really love them so i'm just gonna go wash my face and then we're gonna go move on to the fifth um look so we are now moving on to two looks that i'm really excited about because they're both done by the really talented sharon amy Wu or sour nasty on instagram so both her and make her soft and so I'll just put her in here as well, have some of the most amazing graphic liner and looks, just kind of makeup looks in general that I have seen pretty much across Instagram, YouTube, and all of this. They are both the reason that I started getting into graphic liners in the first place. Uh, okay, so this is the next look that we're gonna do, and I don't think it's technically more difficult than the butterfly look that I've just done, but I think because of all layering colors and all the different elements to it, because there's there's four different elements to it that I have to kind of layer and be aware of. So that and along the fact that to get such strong light, you have to have a bit of confidence in it. So I think I've warmed up to it now. So I'm going to do this one next. I think she starts with little green swirls at the bottom and then goes over the pink. So I'm going to do that. I think the best color for the kind of teal might be this one at the top. I think that's one side done. Okay, now time for the big sweeps of pink on the eye. Okay, 
Okay, moving on to the blue now. So I actually did just swatch about three different blues um, on my hand just to make sure I was happy with the one that I picked, which I should have made the pink higher. Okay, I'm going to make I'm gonna make the pink higher because I'm pretty sure the pink is exactly where the blue needs to go, so I'm gonna make the pink slightly higher. Okay, I moved it up. I especially hate the way that it's looking now being moved up, but we're gonna move. There is so much that I'm realizing I messed up with now. I should have made the little blue swirls much lower because it's actually giving me much less space to play around with the darker blue swirls and get that little pink sheen that I wanted to. <sighs> okay, so the blue is done. I'm not 100% happy with it because obviously the lower blue and the pink and my eye shape mess it all up, but I think let's just get the last section of it done so that we can move on to the last and final item. This yellow is probably going to be a little bit too vivid, I think, for this look. It's kind of more of a neon yellow than the pastel yellow that was in the video itself. I think for the sake of time and brevity, I'm just gonna stick with the one eye. Obviously the colors that I have don't necessarily match up with the colors that she has. I also feel like the star kind of just did not turn out the way that I thought it would. I think I like her design with just these colors. I like what she did, I don't like what I did, essentially. So I'm just gonna quickly wipe this off and then we're gonna get on to the last look of the day. Okay, and we're back and we're cleaning for the final design of the day, which is going to be this. So just for my own sanity, I think, I'm not gonna do the whole look. So I'm not gonna be doing both eyes. I mean, Sharon herself mentioned in one of the TikToks in regards to this video is that, oh, who was I kidding thinking I could start this look at two o'clock and be done at a reasonable time to be able to go to bed. It is now half past four for me. So I cannot reasonably, without her um, level of skill or anything else, complete this in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm just gonna go for one eye instead. Just gonna do the right one, I think. She goes in with an about face. It's like a bit of a base for it. And I don't necessarily have anything that would match that color and that creaminess. But what I'm gonna do is that I think that in this palette, we've used this color before, this light pink should be pretty much the same thing. So I'm gonna go in with that. You should see the outline of a heart around her eye. She goes quite close to the corner of her eyes as well. So the base is now done. And then she goes in with a very, very, very short pencil to fill it in. Okay, so I've grabbed the one, two, and three. And honestly, the one is so tiny. You can like barely even see the tip. Yeah, so it's really small. So I've got that just for like any of the finer lines. I think this one by far is the most difficult because of the precision that is needed. She just got the alternating pattern. She didn't really sketch anything out. She just kind of went in with it. So I think that's what I'm gonna do as well. So I'm gonna get started with I can already tell this is not gonna be great. Okay, so I think from far, <laughs> this might look good, but from up close, it's an absolute tragedy. Uh, while I was watching the video, I noticed that Sharon was looking at the mirror directly straight on, which meant that she was going from like, a front view, whereas I was kind of like turning my head seeing, oh, can, how do I do this? How will it look here? So things got kind of like distorted. I'm gonna quickly just do all the scalloping. Okay, so this is the final look. Overall, I'd probably give it about a three out of five because I think the concept was great. My execution was terrible. I think, A, I think I need to have a lot more practice with intricate details. B, I need to have a lot more patience. I mean, I think I did this in about an hour. Whereas the videos that I've seen Sharon do, or what she said is that she takes about maybe three or four on something like this. So I definitely rushed it and I don't have the skills to be able to back that up. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you want to see me try any other kind of like makeup looks or styles, uh, I'd love to hear that as well. And I hope you have a really good day. Thank you for watching till the end. I really do appreciate taking the time to watch my video. It's really sweet. Okay, bye.